Hello and welcome to the Big Game Safari and the first in a series of video diaries for the FIFA World Cup. Over the next month I'll be on the ground in South Africa filing regular updates from around the Rainbow Nation right here on Xbox Live. There are 10 venues in total located in nine different cities and we'll be visiting them all as we journey through the country that spawns such talismanic figures as Nelson Mandela, Desmond Tutu and Austin Stevens. But before we head south, it is to Wembley, the home of English football, to shoot the breeze with a World Cup winner, a Springbok legend, and Gary Pallister, to find out what it means for Africa to be hosting the biggest show in sport. I mean, it's a great moment for the African continent to have the World Cup because uh, suddenly there's a huge interest that have come in South Africa, obviously, but all over Africa. The energy has been spread all over Africa for the people to discover how is Africa. For us to get this, it's like, you know, it's the biggest thing since Nelson came, Mandela came out of prison and since uh, apartheid ended. Um, we're very, very fortunate uh, to have the World Cup in our country uh, and um, I think everyone's looking forward to it. The excitement is unbelievable. When uh, after apartheid uh, they brought the World Cup to South Africa, it was tremendous success. It, it was probably one of the most exciting World Cups they've ever had in the in, in history of the Rugby World Cup. So um, hopefully this can be the same with football as well. So um, I think everybody's looking forward to it. Um, it's a beautiful country. Um, and we just hope everybody has a good time there. The players, along with Aussie songbird Gabriella Chilmy, are part of One Goal, a campaign that encourages education through footy. But can sport really be used to promote learning? Definitely, especially football, I think, can play an important role and the World Cup's on at the moment. And it's one of those sports that brings so many people together. And uh, we need 72 million signatures on this petition. Imagine if, you know, everyone that came and saw the World Cup signed the petition. I think we could really make some waves. I mean, we are using sports to, you know, to capture the energy and to discipline the people and to, you know, bring them some sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, build up the leadership, uh, but it's not everything. You cannot resolve <laughs> the sort of problem that uh, South Africa, for example, had. Well, it's, it's something that kids are in touch with, and, and I think football is a great medium um, to, to spread the, the sort of gospel or the word or whatever. The, the one goal um, effort is, is, is fantastic to, uh, to bring to, to 72 million children around the world who, who don't get an education. No, just people are looking forward to, you know, to be, be the first um, country in, on the African continent to be given this opportunity to host the World Cup. It's, it's not just South Africa celebrating, it's the whole, the, the whole continent. So um, when it comes to football in Africa, wherever you go, people just want to celebrate and have a good time. So I'm sure that will be the same case now. So to the teams, 32 nations will be vying for the cup, but who will be in the mix once the tournament gets underway? I believe that France, it's more the conscience of the players that yes, this time we are going to stick together to go through because the talent is there. Listen, yeah, I, I've said for a while, I think Spain are, are most people's favourites. They've got the confidence of a, of a European Championship behind them. They've got some superbly exciting talent in the team, Fabregas, Xavi, Torres. For me, success would be getting through the group stages. Um, from there, a lot of things can happen, but we've got Mexico first game, and you guys saw how Mexico played the other day against, against England. They're not, uh, they're not mugs, they can play football. Ghana, obviously, also, and especially Ivory Coast, because I believe that Ivory Coast is the team that have uh, more potential to, uh, to go far into the World Cup because most of the players, forget about Drogba that is there, is the top player, but they have really in the squad players that are first choice in European uh, teams. For England's been unfortunate. It's been, it's been uh, if you go, was it the first World Cup I watched was in Italy, uh, 90, and every time I used to see England, they used to lose on penalties. I think they've got a pretty good chance. I think we've got some terrific players. I think, um, importantly, we've got a man in charge of the side that uh, is vastly experienced, knows what, what's needed. Um, you know, he's a, he's a very strong character, is Fabio Capello. Capello is really a special manager. I mean, uh, uh, unconsciously, he has that energy that few managers have, you know, to, to put the, 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 the correct pressure on the player for him to deliver the performance. This is all about that. 
we always um, used to make a big thing of watching Italy in the World Cup. But now Australia is in the World Cup, so I have to support Australia. I can't support Italy anymore. But And I live in the UK, so I'm going to have to support the UK too. So I've got three teams to watch out for. So it's that world-renowned UK team for Miss Chilmy. But who do the chaps think will be lifting the trophy on July the 11th? Got a big one. Argentina. Argentina. England. <laughs> I'll go for Brazil. Yeah. Because they've got everything. So that's it for the first show. The opening game kicks off on June the 11th as South Africa take on Mexico. Then it's up to Rustenburg to test the durability of the special relationship as England take on the USA. We'll be there for both. But before we go, it's a bit more from Big Marcel, a man with more medals than a Latin American general. I asked him, was winning the World Cup the pinnacle of his career? Uh, no. No, because uh, being a winner of the World Cup and two years after winning the European Cup, was a sort of package that, yes, I cannot do more than that. Uh, then I believe that it's in 2000 that was the, the, the top of my career.